Hi guys, Islam Lego, and welcome back to my channel. I am back from Malta. I'm back in Dundee. But anyway, I am going to be doing a little bit of a Q&A as well. I was going to do it on Instagram and then I was like, you know what, I'll just save this for when I am filming a video. Hopefully this sounds okay. Uh, I know this room is still a little bit echoey. Bear with me. I am working on it in the next couple of weeks. Inshallah, it will come together. A lot of these questions are holiday related and then some of them are just like totally like random and I love that so we're gonna have a mishmash and I'm gonna be getting ready and doing my makeup I am so tanned I never have ever caught this much sun before in my life on holiday this quickly like I am so so tanned and I'm loving it but my skin here is kind of bumpy and yeah I think I don't know if it's the heat or what but yeah I'm just gonna go in with my NARS foundation in Vanuatu this is not their newest one but their second newest one and I really love it finally I can say I'm a summer tone so yeah it should match really well and please excuse this hijab situation let's just not talk about it all right <laughs> first question is was halal food an option in Malta so honestly it was not a huge option now Malta is a country that has a population of 500,000 people not very many at all and out of those 500,000 5,000 are Muslim so yeah it's not like a hugely halal eating place it's not like you know when you go to Dubai and you know you're going to be eating amazing food that's not the case with Malta however there are some options and the place that we went to which was halal was Wild Factory it's a bigger one do not make the mistake that we did and go to the smaller one because that is not halal and they were the first guy that we spoke to was like, yeah, and then we were just like, um, why is this guy not sure if his food's halal? So we went in, and then the owner and the other guy, they were like, yeah, no, they were like, we can't guarantee it's halal. Which, whenever people say that, it's like, just say it's not then, because if you can't guarantee it, then it's not. My cousin even asked them, like, where do you get your meat from? And they were like, we don't know. And then it ended with them actually calling their whole business a disaster. And we were just like, what? <laughs> so we needless to say we did not eat at the small kebab factory in Malta but the big kebab factory was really nice and you know it was so busy like there was so many people sitting outside the inside was really full as well but they had loads of space really nice seating so we definitely recommend it but on the other days we pretty much were just pescatarians or vegetarians and um, we stuck with either like the margarita pizza on the last night or we had calamari and pasta and things like that and um, in terms of food it wasn't like a highlight at all but in my opinion you don't really go to Malta for the food you you go for everything else someone said can you link all the cute dresses that you wore during your vacation unfortunately I can't because they are all like a year plus older I have like a bag of summer clothes and I literally have not brought anything new for summer this year at all I just not had the time like you guys have seen how hectic this year has been I've literally not had the time to do any shopping but inshallah before we go to Turkey then I will do a little bit of shopping for them someone says how was Malta? It seems beautiful, but not much to do, especially with families. Am I wrong? Um, I was thinking about this question. And I was like, to be honest, like it just depends on what you look for on a holiday. Like I know some people want to go abroad and then they want to do lots of activities. But honestly, like I love to just go abroad and just soak up the vibe of that country and explore and see and, and like see things like that's my idea of doing things. But we did end up like going horse riding and there are water sports and and those sort of things available but it is definitely a very like scenic place there are museums and cathedrals as well it's not like london for example where there's loads of things to do but i don't know i feel like when you go to somewhere that's that hot and that beautiful with those kind of blue waters and the beaches and stuff you're much more like this one to like relax and kind of soak in these views that you're just not gonna get here in the uk to be honest like there wasn't a lot of kids on holiday that we saw there there were a few but yeah I guess like in that sense like that like it's not very resorty and I think when you have young families like a resort is really helpful they're kind of all inclusive and they have kids shows and it's, it's more fun for the kids so in that sense then yeah no I wouldn't recommend Walter but it depends on your child and the age and what kind of like what they like to do as well people were so nice guys like one of the most friendliest population of people that I have come across. Definitely recommend for that reason as well. Like they were just so lovely. Someone says, "What is your next honey uh, holiday destination going to be?" And did you enjoy Malta? I definitely enjoyed Malta. It was really good. And inshallah, inshallah, I would love for our next holiday destination to be Turkey. I was originally planning for us to go for July because I've got quite a few weddings to shoot in July, and I was hoping to get my second camera body in Turkey because you get a little bit of a sneaky discount. There you go. If you're a Fuji shooter, then that's something to bear in mind. However, it's not looking like at the moment so maybe later on like 
after August time where the weather is still good but it's not as busy. So I don't know about you guys but I just definitely feel like um, right now every single person and their mom is in Turkey and I, I totally understand why and I totally support that but yeah I feel like everyone's in Turkey right now. <laughs> the next question is recommendations for high street ethical foundations please. So my favourite high street foundations are definitely the wet and wild original one. The Jew one is decent too but I feel like the original Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation definitely has more longe longevity so I would really recommend that. It's like a satin finish and the colour golden beige it works very well. Definitely recommend that and it's literally like six or seven pounds it's so affordable. Then the other one that I also really recommend is the e.l.f. CC cream. I feel like e.l.f. don't really get spoken about much anymore but yeah I think that their CC cream is really good, like the range is decent. I said the e.l.f. one is slightly more coverage and it is a little bit more matte. So if you are more oily skin, try the e.l.f. one. But don't be fooled by the CC cream because, like the worst CC cream, because it is definitely feels like a foundation. Somebody asked, what's your favorite thing about yourself? I think it'd have to be like my people skills and like how I feel like I am pretty good at getting along with different, different types of people, different ages, communication skills. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with like being the oldest daughter, uh, being the oldest granddaughter, you know, and um, also having a lot of experience within like the education field where you are talking to obviously your students, but you're also talking to parents and um, people who are like above you and to, uh, colleagues and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely like my personable nature, I think, would be my favorite thing. Someone else said, um, what TV shows are you watching right now? So I've literally just finished Working Mums and I love that show so much. It's so good. I think we're like we're on season seven, but there's only like 13 episodes per season. It's they're quite short and then each episode is only 20 minutes. But it's really good. It's like written by a woman. Um actually the main actress is written by her. Like she came up with the idea and it's a really, really like even though I'm not a mum, like it's really relatable and I can completely empathize with, with the characters and what they're going through. Guys, now that I'm back in Dundee for at least a couple of weeks. I cannot wait to continue with the house, continue getting it sorted. I've been using like the same makeup products for months now and I'm just so bored of them all. And I also need to go and have a clear out of the things that have just been gathering dust and probably have expired at this point. But yeah, that's pretty much my base done. Let me know guys what you're watching right now and where you're watching it on, if it's Netflix, Prime. Um, someone says, what did you learn about yourself during the pandemic? Oh, good question. Really good question. I'm just gonna blend my brow in while I think about that. <laughs> Honestly, like, I know this is not like a typical answer at all, but what I learned about myself was that the career route that I chose for myself when I was 18, and even then it was still kind of open because I went down the psychology route and then thought, should I go down the teaching route? But that career route, which I genuinely thought I would just keep on keep on with it forever and ever and ever. It's not for me and that's okay. And I feel like I kind of need to make like a video just addressing that. I mean, I did I did make a video almost a year ago now about, you know, teachers quitting, quitting the profession. And I feel like, honestly, I feel like since I quit, the statistic has just gone up and up and up. It's just, it's becoming almost unbearable now for teachers. Horrible that that's the situation, but it's kind of comforting to know that it's, you know, it wasn't just me that was feeling like this profession is becoming harder and harder to stay in. And it's a shame because I would say like 80% plus of teachers get into the profession because they love making a difference and working with children, not because of like the monetary benefits because there's really not many at all. But then it just comes to a point where it's like if your mental and physical health is being Im impacted by a job, it's not worth it. And you're definitely not getting paid for the hours that you're working within the career. And I even tried like a more flexible route of doing like supply and you know, like a lot of teachers who do who work full time in a long term contract, they tend to kind of see supply teachers as like taking the shortcut because you're not as tied down. But yeah, I don't know. I think that's the biggest thing I learned is that it's okay for the career that I thought was gonna last forever and ever to not be that. And also that I'm only 26, like, you know, I, I, I still have so much time that you can reinvent yourself and go into something different at any point. And I think we're always pushed to make these big decisions, these life changing decisions at like 16, 17, 18. But you as a person will change so much between that that time to this time. But yeah, it's, it's crazy to think that you have to sit to that, unless you obviously want to, which is great. 
But um, yeah, I also learned that I'm capable of starting my own small business and all the skills that go with that, like that I had no training for at all, you know, uh, working with clients and uh, dealing with the admin and actually marketing myself, um, you know, dealing with payment, setting up a website. I mean, I did have skills for the website for my blog, but yeah, I think I learned that I can do what I want to do and I just have to kind of dare to do it and have the right support around me and alhamdulillah like I wouldn't say that my um, photography business is bringing in bank, <laughs> definitely not, it's not even like replacing a full time income at all at this point but it's definitely getting busier and I'm definitely increasing the experience, it's paying for itself and it's giving me a little bit extra to, at the moment all I've been doing is reinvesting in my business, I've not actually like <laughs> you know properly like done anything for myself solely from that money but that's okay because businesses literally take time and perseverance and persistence to start and then continue to run and it's not easy at all it's definitely not easy but alhamdulillah i've really enjoyed that journey so far yeah i'd say that's it um that's a really good question and maz was the one who asked it so if you guys would like to let me know down below what you learned about yourselves in the pandemic i mean i would love to honestly hear the battery died but we are back and i don't know what i was saying i think i was just asking you guys yeah what you learned that would be really interesting to know um, someone says, how was it like going on holiday without Wukar? Honestly, it was really weird because like, I've not travelled without him since we've been married. Yeah, like obviously I've been going down south without him and I have been on the plane to like fly to Luton Airport from Edinburgh without him. But in terms of actually like exploring a new country, like, I really, really miss him. And I messaged him like, I actually miss you a lot more than I thought I would. And he was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> but like, I, I knew I'd miss him, but I didn't realize how much I'd miss him. However, it was also really nice to just go on a girls trip, like with my sister and cousins. And yeah, it was a totally different experience, but I did enjoy it a lot. It was cool, like seeing how other people travel too. Cause you know, like you kind of, especially once you've been married a while, you kind of fall into your habits of traveling and like what you tend to do. and. For us, traveling is very like food focused and chill focused. Like we, we kind of travel to obviously explore the country, but also to like just have a break and relax. And I feel like with Malta, we were getting, having a lot more early nights than we would have had if it was me and Mugar. But because of that, we ended up seeing a lot more. So when I came back, I said to him, I was like, you know, it was, I missed you a lot, but I also learned a lot. And I feel like, you know, from inshallah with our next holiday, we're going to do a mix of both. Like some days, we're gonna have early starts so we can see certain places that are just not worth seeing if it's too busy. And then other days we're gonna just have chill days as well. So yeah, it definitely was a good experience and I would totally do it again. Someone said, how does it feel to be back in the UK? The weather is so rubbish today. <laughs> not gonna lie, as soon as we got off the plane in Luton, it was raining and all of us, like not just us six, like everyone on the plane was like, Oh, back to the rain. <laughs> Today, alhamdulillah, and I'm filming this, it's beautiful weather, so I can't complain. Yeah, a little bit more sun would not hurt. What is my favorite part about Malta? It's so hard to say because genuinely every single day there was at least one or two highlights, which was so nice. It would probably be the water, how blue it was. We went to the so many different parts, you know, uh, we went to Camino and on Camino, which is this tiny little island where only two people live. Crazy, right? Only two people live on Camino, and there used to be four, but then one person died in 2020, the other person died in 2017, so now only two people actually inhibit it. It's so small. But that bit is where you go where the boats go, and then you can have the pineapple drinks, and, and there's a tiny little beach bit where people go for swimming there, and that was stunning. And then the Crystal Lagoon as well, oh, it was so beautiful. I think just being on the boat and just appreciating the water, the clarity. We saw jellyfish as well, which was so cool. Yeah, just like the Mediterranean part of it was just gorgeous. But also like, do you know, our hotel people were so nice as in like every single person working for that hotel was so welcoming, so accommodating. And I was really surprised at that. Like they were so sweet. So I think the treatment we got as well, because sometimes like I'm sure you can, you guys might be able to relate, like when you are, you know, a visibly Muslim woman or you're just not white, sometimes you don't get that treatment when you go to European countries. And I'm always a bit like, I don't know how this is gonna be, but alhamdulillah, it was really good. And the weather, the weather, like it was crazy because the weather there was, it was only saying like 22, 23, 24 degrees. So we were kind of like, oh well, like that's kind of not that dissimilar to UK weather, but 
I'm telling you that sun is different. My skin is telling you that sun is different. Like, look at the um, tan. <laughs> look at the tan line as well. Like, it's crazy. I, it's just a different type of sun. It's a proper feel-good vitamin D enriching sun. Oh, we loved it. That, that Those would be my favourite things. And horse riding for the first time. That was amazing too. I'm really glad I pushed myself to do that because I was not going to do that. But I'm glad I did. <laughs> Um, someone says, what shade are you with the NARS concealer? I've not worn the NARS concealer in a very long time, but I used to use ginger um, as like more of my skin tone shade and custard as a actual under eye shade for brightening. Someone says, would love to see your thoughts on the planner you use considering for next year as a student. I love my planner and I did a whole long video about it, I think two years ago now um, or last year. And this is the third time I've purchased this planner. I love it so much, but I would say that I think it's more of a journal type planner than a daily breakdown if that makes sense so i feel like as a student it's helpful to have like timings or even like enough space per day to write your timings and they do have lots of different types of planners so i would 100 percent recommend the company they're called inspired stories and they are amazing um the quality is really good i literally use my journal every single day uh, but for me like i said it's, it is about planning because at the start of the week i will or the end of the week or whenever I'm sitting down I will plan my work to do's, my personal to do's, my priorities um, and I'll sort of then put them on the next, the next page is double page spread where you can write down your to do's, important to do's for each day but then there's like the journaling section which I personally love it, that's very therapeutic for me to so just write down how the day was and then the reflection part of it. So yeah I will, I'm not sure that I'd recommend the exact one that I have but I will definitely leave a link down below where you can see the different types of planners that there are available and that's about it i think i answered all the questions there i hope you guys are well i hope you enjoyed this little get ready with me q a anyway guys thank you so much for watching and um, let me know if you have any questions and there are there's still two pakistan videos to come out and then after that it'll be the motor videos so i am a little bit behind but yeah just bear with me i'm just trying to find a good balance between you know this which is still very much like a hobby really i'm not getting paid monthly even for this um and day-to-day -day life <laughs> so yeah hope you guys are doing well and i'll see you guys in my next video take care bye